the arrival of certain anonymous VIPs has been looming over. And with Ji Hoon still on the loose, the front man is clearly starting to panic as these supposedly very important people get closer and closer. Since the last game killed a couple of major cast members, it's almost a relief to see Minyo waiting for everyone to return. Since she was determined the weakest link, she basically got a free pass to the next round. Dioksu is understandably devastated by this news. More determined than ever to track the imposter down, the front man discovers he has been in his personal quarters thanks to the position of the phone. But he is pulled away before he can discover himself by news of a body being washed ashore. The body that's discovered, by the way, is the one Junho tossed overboard during his infiltration and planted his ID on it. The front man takes a good long look at that ID. The remaining players, meanwhile, are not in a good mood, especially not 069, whose partner in the marble game was his wife, and Ji Hoon, who still feels responsible for the death of 001. 069 has a mid level breakdown until Shang Wu lectures him into shape. He gradually starts addressing their entire room, rationalizing his own actions having essentially sentenced Ali to death. The VIPs all arrive wearing a fancy animal mask. The front man greets them and laments that the host can't be there personally due to some urgent business. They are all present to watch the next game and have been betting on the outcome. One of them had a big sum on 069, who, as they can see on the video screens, is about to hang himself. Junho, meanwhile, is still nearby and takes it upon himself to knock out the waiter and steal his outfit to get closer to the VIPs. When the players wake up the next morning, they find 069 dead, hanging from his bunk, as the chirpy announcer's voice tells them he has been eliminated and the piggy bank fills up a little more. The fifth game is about to begin. Everyone is much more melancholy as they make their way up the staircase. The front man introduces the game to the VIPs, who are lounging around with human footstools and the staff introduces it to the players. Each is ordered to choose a mannequin and take its corresponding vests. Number 1 through 16. After some fretting about the relevance of the numbers, the announcer pipes up again at the push of the frontman's button, explaining that the numbers determine the order in which they'll be playing. As Ji Hoon deliberates, everyone else grabs the remaining numbers, leaving only 1 and 16. The two most dangerous numbers, he theorizes. Luckily, the decision is made for him. One of the other players, 096, politely requests to be the number 1. The game works thusly. There's a giant bridge. It's full of alternating stepping stones made of either tempered or normal glass. The tempered glass will hold the weight of two people and the normal glass wouldn't even support one. The vest number determines the order in which you cross the bridge. The time limit is also 16 minutes. Everyone must cross. 096 makes it one step before falling to his death. Attempts to figure out a pattern to the glass fall flat. Obviously, with each unsuccessful attempt, it gets easier for the next person. Meanwhile, in the VIP area, one of the most obviously detestable and lecherous guests take a shine to the disguised Junho, ordering him first to sit beside him to fill his drink and then to remove his mask. Eventually, the players in the back of the line starts to get anxious about the time limit and begin shoving the players in front through the panes of glass. After a while, Dioksu finds himself the leader of the pack, 
with several more panels to clear and only about 6 minutes left. Of course, he flat out refused to proceed unless someone else goes ahead of him. Meanwhile, Jun Ho, still being beggared about taking his mask off, persuades the VIP to take him somewhere they can be alone. The VIP gets his gelatinous body out and promises to change Jun Ho's life if he can satisfy him within 5 minutes, but he gets more than he bargained for. Suddenly at gunpoint, Jun Ho gives him 5 minutes to tell him everything he knows about the games. On the bridge, Minyo confronts Dioksu and has run out of patience for him. She agrees to go ahead of him, but when she steps on his panel, she grabs him around the waist and refuses to let go. She said she would kill him if he betrayed her. And he betrayed her. So here we are. She pulls him back through the next panel and they both fall to their deaths. Sangu, Saibyok and Jihoon are among the few remaining including a glassmaker who can identify the faint stain marks in the tempered glass. Since the glassmaker is able to examine the refraction of the light through the glass, the frontman changes the setting to make it harder for him. In the dark, the glassmaker needs to analyze the sounds of the glass in order to make a decision. So he throws the only thing he has available, 001's marvel from the previous game, which Jihoon has been carrying ever since. But one marble isn't enough for two panels of glass. Since he's taking too long, Shang Wu pushes him through the final panel to his death, and the three main characters make it across. Seconds later, all the remaining panels explode behind them. All three get slashed by the debris. Judging by Saibyok's reaction, she perhaps got hit worse than the others. Meanwhile, Junho escapes from the facility using one of the dive packs. The frontman and several goons pursue him in a speedboat. Junho is reaching the mainland with the evidence of the game on his phone. Sangu and his relationship with Jihoon is badly suffering. Saibyok also continues to be a little caggy. We see that a giant chunk of glass is wedged in her stomach. She pulls it free and bandages the wound, but it's a bad one. The finalists have all been given numbered tuxedos as a reward of their success, but there's clearly a bit of time killing involved since the frontman is still on the island in pursuit of Junho. He symbolically shoots a hole into the oxygen canister that Junho left on the beach. The officer is able to call his superior and request that he locate his signal and send a whole squad there. He also sends him several of the photos and videos he has taken as evidence, which should do the trick, but there isn't enough signal for the message to get through. Elsewhere, several fine meals are prepared for the finalists on a table in shape of a triangle. It's an odd dynamic to see the guards suddenly waiting on the players. Jihoon and Shang Wu angrily stare at each other while eating, and Sai Byok does her very best to remain conscious. All the while, Jun Ho continues to run around the island, trying to evade capture long enough to get some consistent phone signal. Eventually, he is concerned. The frontman knows plenty about the gun loading policies of the Korean police. So he knows that Juno only has one remaining bullet, which he promptly puts in the front man's shoulder. But that doesn't disord him. Junho asks who the hell he is, and finally the twist is revealed. The front man is indeed Junho's brother, Inho. He asks Junho to make this easy, but he won't. Instead of answering his brother's question of why, Inho instead shoots Junho and he falls off the cliff into the ocean. Meanwhile, the finalists were all left with a steak knife, each following their dinner.
and back in the dorm room each sits on their bed and presumably contemplates stabbing the others sai byok do isn't looking too good ji hun approaches her and after a brief conversation about her family back in north korea they agree to make a deal if either of them can make it out of this they'll look after each other's loved ones after that sage advised do she begins to lose consciousness from the blood loss ji hun summons help but the guards enter with a coffin not a doctor when ji hun turns around shang wu is standing over sai byok's bedside having cut her throat enraged ji hun picks up his own knife and lunges at him but the guards separate them there's still a final game to play after all the sixth game is really just a fight between ji hun and shang wu and at this point good and evil ji hun is able to win the squid game with his morality intact despite having the opportunity to kill his former friend he doesn't take it in fact he even tries to sacrifice the prize money by enacting the third clause of the contract which would seize the game and save both finalists but shang wu having already lost the best part of himself is having none of that he stabs himself in the neck instructing jin hu to take care of his mother before expiring now a winner and a very rich man ji hun is taken back to the mainland by the front man tragically though when ji hun returns home he finds his mother dead 12 months later and despite not having spent any of his prize money ji hun is obviously a changed man the events of the games are clearly not far behind him though especially not when ji hun buys a rose attached to which is a note instructing him to visit the 77th floor of the sky building on december 24th signed by your ganbu the twist is both good and bad news the good is that dear old man inam is still alive the bad is that this is because he is the enigmatic host and has been orchestrating these games since their genesis it's crushing to finally find brain tumor which turns out to be real and the primary motivator behind his actual inclusion in the game this year to kill himself off sooner rather than later he honors his promise to sai byok by taking her brother to sang woo's mother and setting them both up for life he interrupts the salesman trying to recruit more people for the games and he promises the frontman that he will make him pay for everything he has done 